Hello and welcome to West Underground. Today I'm ecstatic. I'm actually over the moon. This is exciting. And this is a band I wanted to talk to for a very long time. It's none other than the Hot Potato Band, the hottest horn section in Sydney, probably even the hottest horn section in Australia. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. Um, but I just want to throw the mic over to you, Simon, and ask you, man, like, <clears throat> what's the story? How'd you start the band? And why'd you settle for the name, the Hot Potato Band? Yeah, good question. Um, the um, well, I mean, starting the band, we actually were not supposed to do more than one gig. Uh, we were asked to, um, or I was asked to, put together a little show for a a wine festival. And on site, they didn't really have a space for uh, power, um, so instruments that that were powered. And I've always worked with instruments that need an electric keyboard or an electric guitar. Um, and so it kind of gave me the opportunity to think, okay, how do I put together a band that kind of walks around almost like the New Orleans street bands very similar to that idea the brass bands uh so i, I thought oh, look i'll put together a, a quick band see if i can put it together for the show and really realistically i thought this was just going to happen once um and the thing is it was very short notice um the guys that only just worked together we had like one rehearsal the gig um was four hours long but we only had enough time to learn four songs <laughs> i can you know you, i'm sure you can imagine <laughs> how tough that can be um so the 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 actual name came from the idea of uh how how do we kind of change up and variate the songs enough that the people listening didn't realize we were playing the same four songs over and over again for the four hours <laughs> okay and so the, the only way we could come up with this idea on the fly was uh you know uh, basically we'd have you know one of us lead the band and then uh you'd play the four songs and then do the four songs again but somebody else would lead the band and to a degree, the songs would kind of go in different directions because each member would have a different idea of how they want to take the, so take the song. It might be into a solo section. It might be a drum break, you know, all these different things. Um, and so, yeah, we, we finished the gig and we got to the end of it and thought, great, that was it. We're not probably not going to do it again. Um, but we actually got a lot of calls yeah. <laughs> straight afterwards. And um, we ended up booking uh, a lot of the, the next five or six years was a lot of shows where we did a lot of street shows, a lot of um surprise parties and weddings and um you know all the things anywhere you wanted a surprise band pop potato bank get in there and do it um and all along we didn't really have a plan like oh where are we going with this it's just they just kind of these gigs just kind of kept flowing in um and so we were kind of really harnessing like what we were doing and, and really growing into what we were doing as well and so we eventually decided let's just write some original music uh mm -hmm. and so yeah about five six years ago from today uh, we we actually um, yeah kicked off a whole whole different era of Hot Potato Band. Wow, man, that that's that's awesome! I can't believe that that's you know, that, I think this is the most spontaneous band story we've we've ever heard, and it, and it <laughs> now had like, did you say like fi like five years? You've all been together and still kind of going. That's that's a that's you know that's amazing, but um, I the the thing that I. I'm like, is it hard to, to play shows with, and also practice when you got so many people in the band? Like that was one thing I always wondered, like, how do these boys keep it together? If you got so many people in the band, there surely there'd be nights where someone's like, oh man, I can't make it this night. And how do you, how do you all manage to practice? Or you're all pretty solid and diligent about it. Yeah. Very, very much solid and diligent about it now. Um, back in the day, you know, a lot of the stuff we would kind of practice on the street. You know, like we get, you know, even even getting used to, we used to have roaming drums. So, you know, walking around with drums and everything, uh, we had to get used to doing that. So the best way to do it was just get on the street and play music. Um, and that was the way that we we would um, rehearse to a degree. It wasn't the best way to do it, um, but it was the way that we found interesting performance elements that we can tie into our music. And so we developed music that way, using performance. Um, and then we, as we then went into writing original music, we kind of took those elements, those ideas that we had on the street, playing covers and playing kind of, uh, and moving around and doing all the bits and pieces. We took that onto the stage and then put that into our original music as well. So that was the idea is carry it across. And everybody kind of knew how things worked. And by that point, everyone really knew how to arrange um, music for for the band, I suppose, to a degree. So everyone kind of had their part, knew, knew what was going to happen. Um, and then basically from there, we just, we do weekly rehearsals and get together and it, it's, it's everybody. It's all 10 people in a room and, and we just keep it, keep it tight, <laughs> as tight as possible. Oh man, that's, that's, 
you know, it's it's amazing that you've like it's you know it's hard you know it's hard enough to be in a band with four people, but to be in a band with ten people, I mean that's something else. But it's amazing <laughs> that you guys are able to keep it together, man. Um, yeah. But also, like when you started writing songs, how mm-hmm. how many like was it? Is there one songwriter in the band, or is it like do you write the the melody and then come to the boys and be like, all right, I've got this. What are we gonna do with it? How does it work? Yeah, great question. This is um, this um, it's it's really interesting. Uh, so at first, when we were first writing yeah. original music, it was I had written a couple of tunes. I had a bit of knowledge in charting, so I could chart uh, music for horn players. Um, uh, and you know, I kind of threw some tunes together and was like, let's give it a go, see what happens. Um, and once the ball started rolling, a number of the other guys are also great composers. They're great at charting and arranging and doing all the bits and pieces. And so once we actually uh, opened it up to the group to write for the group, uh, everyone would bring in the bones of a track. And usually they'd be roughly charted out or something. There'd be ideas there. Yeah. We bring it into the, into the group with all 10 of us and we play it through. And we, I mean, right now we've, we've kind of workshopped, I'm sure with every band there's ways of like, how do you communicate things that aren't good in a song? And, you know, you got to kind of figure out the communication, right, without kind of hurting feelings and, you yeah. know, allowing the creativity to keep flowing. So, you know, you go through all these little growing pains as you, as you move on, but we're at a stage now where like every song that gets, that gets written or brought into the group, we now, you know, it, it's played out. We then have like a whole a way of like, you know, discussing what worked, what didn't work, what could be better, you know, like also, you know, just the way we communicate and, and, and get through the, the, um, the arranging process from there. So everyone really then kind of like piles on all of the extra stuff on top of the bones of the chart and it becomes a, uh, a song that the whole band wrote, even though the initial idea starts with one person. Yeah. Wow. And uh, like, <laughs> this is going to be, this is, this is just a, like a quite like a thing that came to my head when you do that. How do you, like are you guys do you have to when you write a song you know how like you and you go to Apple and stuff like that and you split the songs between the band mm-hmm. does yeah. everybody have a tenth of the pie like is is that how <laughs> yeah it's good <laughs> good question yeah i mean look it, you know we we talked about that for a long time we we didn't want to go down the road of um uh going through labels and all the bits and pieces and we kept everything in house and we decided that you know for the amount of effort that we all put into writing the songs yeah let's just split it the songwriter gets the, the initial songwriter gets the the large cut of the pie um yeah. and then we have what we do is we we um then have a split system from there so usually i mean it depends on again it really depends on on how the song's written but for some of them or most of them will have like you know 50 percent goes to the songwriter and then you'll have the next um 40 percent that gets split up 10 yeah. ways that includes the songwriters so that puts the songwriter at 54 percent and then we actually have a 10 percent left over and what that is is for the songwriter they usually will collaborate with one of the other guys quite heavily yeah. so for example if a drummer wants to write a song they might need a hand with a horn player to kind of help arrange for example so they actually put a lot of they might collaborate and work together so in that case you know we have this gifting system within the band where it's like thanks so much for helping out like your help on my song made it all that much better so you then we have this system of like gifting the extra royalty split yeah that's really clever. I like that. I've never heard of that happening before, but it's a, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a good system because it rewards, you know, yes. creativity and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really smart. Yeah. Well, look, you know, that's the thing is within the group is we, we, we're all like a family really. And we, we don't, um, you know, everyone puts so much work and time into, as you, I'm sure, you know, like any rehearsal you do, you know, you're spending a lot of your time doing that and, and working on tunes. And so rightly so, like it's, it's, it's whatever we can do to you know <laughs> to reward <laughs> yeah. you know? no i like it i like that man and um like <clears throat> when you were like when you were starting off a cut like years ago um mm-hmm. like i i listened to your cover of of riptide and mm-hmm. i have never listened to van like every time i listen to van stories since mm-hmm. i i can't I just think, oh, it's 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 not quite that other one because your mm-hmm. version of it, I feel like, just took that song into another place, and and I, I was just wanted to get back to where we started when you were saying you were taking songs and kind of changing them around, like cover songs and stuff. Um, was that where that was that one of those original four covers? 
Yeah, that was one of those original book covers. Yeah, so it was one of the first tunes that we kind of started doing um, mm-hmm. when we were on the streets. And then we kind of just readapted it. Now, the, the, the reason we did that is just because um, uh, when we first started moving to the band onto a stage, we yeah. wanted to try and bridge the gap between like people here in Australia don't know a lot about brass bands, don't really connect with them all that much. Yeah. Horn players, definitely. Like if there's horns in a song, but as a brass band, you know, it's, it's pretty tricky to find one that people know about um, and let alone know how it works. So what we did is we would take those covers and, and really try to bridge the gap um, so that people understood that the brass band is quite cool. It can take an electric song, turn it totally brass. You know what I mean? And people started to connect with us that way before we then started releasing original music. Yeah, I, I feel like you guys are making the brass band sexy. Like I'd ne- <laughs> I, <laughs> like in, in high school, it never looked too glamorous, right? But but yeah. when you guys do it, it looks, oh shit, man, I wish I started playing sax or, you know, yeah. or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, that's the thing is we, we actually now go in and do um, workshops at schools now. So that's... Uh, to kind of inspire a lot of those kids because a lot of kids do sit in 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 a lot of those um rehearsals and come out of school and go like ah, oh, it was all right but not my thing but what we do is when we want to get in there and be like you know like hey it's actually can be really cool to play the saxophone you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's more than just playing mary had a little lamb and all the bits and pieces yeah man and all they got to do is look you guys up and think yeah you know this shit's hot you know like that like it it looks it looks good it sounds good and it and it just makes that thing so much more appealing because like you know and i think that's good that the schools are letting you guys come in and do that as well Mm -hmm. because it just makes music you know look so much more because i'm just thinking back in memory and man and uh like the brass band at school was not an, like an attractive thing at the time to do but i imagine with you guys going in there it, it just it's getting kids to you know pick up an instrument yeah absolutely yeah it, it absolutely. also it also influences the class to be a band as well because there's 10 of you and there's usually 10 in the music class and it's yeah. like hey we're all gonna be a band now because these guys did it <laughs> so yeah. imagine the high school band just stick together <laughs> so yeah it's possible absolutely yeah. yeah it does it does it does show because that there is a lot of possibility with the instruments they have i mean i think a lot of them are influenced by you know the music they might hear on you know triple j or the radio and, and all that's really good but if they're not playing instruments that are lining up with a lot of the bands they're hearing they don't feel like there's really a future in it unless they happen to have a great teacher that's giving them a lot of opportunities and bits and pieces so to see a band actually playing around with these instruments in a fun way in a cool way um to audiences that are just the same as a lot of those popular bands that they're listening to just gives them that little bit of hope you know if they do want to get into it it's like there's there's a possibility you know you just gotta want it <laughs> Mm. Yeah, for sure and are you guys have you have you guys got like any i don't know i'm trying not to use the word like competition here but like anybody that's doing the same thing as you guys because i think you're one of a kind right like are there uh, anybody here in here in australia it's, it, there's not a lot of bands that are like us i uh, i mean you look in the states there's a lot of brass bands yeah um, and you, you can look at them all the way from like you know the brass bands that play on the nfl fields to you know the streets of new orleans so there's a lot of different variety over there um but here yeah you, there's a couple of brass bands around where i mean i wouldn't say yeah the word competition is definitely not the word but it, it we, we both work in different um different ways so there's a great brass band up in brisbane called bullhorn um they're a bit of a new wave kind of brass band but they're really great um and uh, I think there's a couple, there's one down in Victoria called Horns of Leroy, a little bit more on the traditional jazzy New Orleans side. Um, and then there's like a junk, Junkadelic, I think is their name. And they're out what, WA. Yeah. And they kind of, uh, they, their idea is like just totally junk instruments in a brass way. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, 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 I like, I really hope you guys like just, just keep going. Cause I, I, I'm interested just as a spectator and, you know, somebody on the sideline watching you guys going, fuck, I hope these guys really, you know, keep going and see how far they can take this. Oh, cheers. Yeah. No, thanks. It's, it's really, it's awesome to, to be out there doing it and getting yeah. back out there. <laughs> For sure. And there's a part of me, which has my fingers under the table, man, just going, I hope these guys don't become a jazz band. Please don't let them <laughs> Yeah, no, look, you know, a lot of us have a lot of the jazz background, but we, yeah. we took, we took all that and, and, you know, used the, what we've learned. And yeah, we, we do kind of uh, 
you know, focus on creating music that you're hearing there. Like it's pretty multi-genre, but uh, yeah, there is a bit of jazz influence. You've just touched on a question that I wanted to ask too. Like if somebody asks you guys and go, oh, you know, you're, you're in a band. What kind of, what kind of music does your band play? Like how, what, what, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. Uh, every time I try to explain the band, it's also very tough, you know, like even it takes a conversation this long to actually get to the, to help under, people understand what the band is. <laughs> but yeah, generally I will say it's multi-genre. It's pretty like, you know, yes, there's elements of funk and there's pop and there's uh, a little bit of scar in there as well. But uh, yeah, generally it's just like, but I don't think we write songs with the same genre. Every song comes in, it's a different genre. So <laughs> multi-genre seems to work. You're an interesting uh, like, like, like case study. Cause like I, I was thinking about this before I started and it's kind of like, you're a labelist band. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Like, what would you say? But I imagine the conversations, like if you just had a, you know, conversation with a random punter and you said, Oh, I'm in a band. And they're like, Oh, that's cool. You know, what kind of music? Well, it's kind of a horn section. Da, 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 da. Like, you yeah. know, it, 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 it doesn't really have like a specific, you know, title. That's right. It is very hard to, uh, to explain to people. Yeah. And have, have you got like, when you, when you're trying to explain it to some people, have you kind of got that confused look in their eyes, like going, Oh, oh cool. you're cool. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Most people kind of just go, Oh, that sounds like, it sounds like fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, that's, that's about as far. You just like, just, you, you're probably better off just going to Spotify, you know, just go take a listen to something and just <laughs> <laughs> come back to me then. <laughs> nice. And, um, how long, like as a band, like when you started putting out original music, you know, I, before we did this, I went and had a look at your, you know, your guys' socials and, you know, YouTube and stuff like that, just to kind of give my brain a bit of a refresh. And um, how long was it of a journey for you guys before people started to really notice you guys? Like I noticed on your last single, you, you've gotten, you know, like, like uh, your music video has got heaps of views on it and stuff like that. Has it been a long journey or has it happened quite fast? Uh, you know, I mean, we've definitely been just on like a, a, a gradual kind of like upward trajectory. There's not been like a necessarily like a spike. Yeah. Um, but we, when we were doing a lot of the street stuff, we, we had a, what was great is we actually grew a fan base based on the fact that we we're doing a lot of street stuff. Once we released original music, it was great because we had an audience that wanted to listen to what we were about to release, um, and a following. And, and so, you know, selling, a sh selling shows in Sydney here, especially was, it was a breeze. Um, it was tough as you then obviously then try to branch out. Um, but I think our music started moving quite quickly because, you know, when we do play shows in and around the place, we're not in a lot of um, other States regularly, but when we are, uh, yeah, we have a lot of people that, that want to come and just join in. So, yeah. And look, I think that's also testament to just the, 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 you know, starting off with those cover songs. Sometimes that's also helpful to just like let that out into the world and um, people see them on YouTube or they see them on Spotify or wherever they're listening. And, um, and they just, uh, yeah, they just, that's where they kind of pick up on, on what we're doing. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And uh, like, it, it's working. So just keep going guys. And uh, <laughs> you know, like also like, how do you guys get booked? You know, like, have you guys, you've, I've seen some stuff where you've played on some big stages and stuff. Um you know, like what kind of venues and festivals and stuff are you guys, you know, how do I word this, you know, get picked for, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's different. I guess one, my role in the group is actually to, to book a lot of the shows. Um, and I do um, from the beginning, even when it was the, the roaming and the stage, uh, the roaming shows. And then um, once that, moved on um uh we kind of just take every now and again we kind of take turns and booking things like we have one of the guys that work on all the workshops and things like that um and we also um yeah we we, we have a lot of um just kind of like branching out and, and a lot of the guys now work within the group um to kind of help put it all together yeah that, like, that's it's interesting because i was thinking too like um <clears throat> you know it if you guys, if you guys play, obviously at a, cause there's not many bands like you. So how do you find, you know, which ones to go to and which ones not to? Cause you, yes. 
are you limited in that, that respect at the moment or is Better it or, like are you guys are you guys limited with festival opportunities in 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 a sense like of i suppose like if you're a conventional four-piece rock band right you've you've kind of got a little bit of a trajectory of where you can guys can go but are you like a festival's open to the idea of you guys jumping on you know with the 10 piece horn section and stuff yeah yeah i think a lot of them are like you know we definitely have you know there's certain festivals that uh you know that probably we don't necessarily suit like you know obviously there's a lot of those other ones um larger um what i'm trying to think of like um like I, th I feel like honestly we probably suit a lot of the like um your yeah, woodfords and your yeah, uh blues fests and yeah that kind of vibe you know what i mean yeah. where it's kind of like an all age but kind of demographic does yeah. that make sense yeah um but yeah most of the time people don't mind and the other thing too is like our backline is minimal really like um <laughs> everything you just walk on with other than uh drums we just need to have our own like drum setup so as long as there's like yeah. one on a riser that can get rolled out we're good to go otherwise it's all pretty easy and we, we have a system um you know all the horns are wirelessly mic'd so there's actually you know nothing needs to really be set up on the stage we just got to walk on and play uh everyone's on ears so there's really not really a sound check needed and that was important because as a 10 piece the sound check takes a long time especially if you've got horns that are also moving around the stage while we're performing so the idea there was like great get them on ears um everything's wireless you can do your own mix on your iphone and everyone just does it backstage before you get onto, her, on, onto the stage and then you're good to go and basically we just roll the show every time so it's we just need a line check, which is amazing for a band that's 10 piece. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very cool. Like the, like I, you know, guitar players must, and bass, bassists, you know, you know, bass players must be very jealous, you know, when they have like, like lug on the amps and the pedal boards and everything. And they just see you guys just cruising up on the stage and slowly walking off as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man, that's 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 great. You know, I think that makes up for it. You know, you've got ten people in the band, but you don't have to, you know, take a trailer to get to the gigs. You know, you you can yeah. yeah, we can yeah, and we fit all in just one big you know twelve seater <laughs> with all the instruments. You know, it's quite great. Yeah. Oh, so you've got a like a van? Like you guys have got a? Oh uh, no, I mean whenever we yeah, generally when we when we're flying around, or if we need a you know. We can just all fit in one car. So we would just rent a big uh, 12 seater um, wherever we're going. Nice, man. And have you, have you guys considered doing a bit of a tour up, you know, up the North coast of New South Wales or down to Victoria or. Yeah. Victoria? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, so we're in um, Victoria in December actually. Um, okay. And then basically from the end of January through to the beginning of may we're doing pretty much all of australia and then we've got new zealand in may so that's oh, the oh wow that's, man congratulations yeah. yeah so it's nice yeah, obviously there's a lot of things we've just been waiting to kind of get back out there so yeah. a lot of plans they just got rolled on from last year you know like when things kind of got cancelled you're just like all right well <laughs> postpone 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 and so yeah it's all gonna hopefully happen next year beautiful and are you guys self-managed like do you have a do you have a manager which is doing all the stuff for you or are you boys planning it all out yourselves and doing it you know yeah it's just just me actually i, I self-manage I, I manage the whole the whole project so oh wow man that, that's that's huge you know? good fun yeah so when you when you're going around australia now are you guys going to fly most like fly city to city or are you going to just get the 12 take the 12 seater out and you know uh, the miles on the van no 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 we fly every time but um we do that because i mean it's, it's great to drive we back in the day we were driving um but it's uh the band is has a lot of energy and so like if we if we put it all into you know driving can kind of take away a lot of your energy even if you're not driving you still lose a lot of energy so then getting to a show and kind of feeling fresh you kind of lose that so um yeah we, we just we just jump on a plane and, and make it happen and it just um it's just a lot easier you know yeah 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 it keeps everyone fresh and it means it's also sustainable for the for the gang as well because you know the, they they like coming back and feeling like great that was a great show i'm feeling good it's not like destroying the rest of my week when i come back home 
you yeah. know. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. And yeah. like, it's good too, because I mean, you guys can just put, you know, take the, take the horns in and you don't have to worry about trying to get, you know, guitars or anything. Through. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. There's not much to really check in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. They replace, they replace equipment with people. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just on the amount of people you've got you must have like at least one bad experience of being on a small stage like you must have that mistake of being on a small stage like oh, we're all jammed here boy we're all jammed here we'll just have to face each other and just start playing you should yes. have like one experience yeah yeah okay so yeah one one great experience so one of the first shows we actually played was um i don't know if you've heard of the brass monkey in cronulla Oh, oh yeah man yeah yeah so um we, we played we played there one of our first shows um and our sousaphone play is fairly t- tall now sousaphone is that wrap around tuba that goes up and it, it sits above your head and, and projects over your head um and he's fairly fairly tall uh, but when you're in that space it's already a pretty low kind of basement feel in that venue the stage then you know you then elevated and then there's not a lot of height so he himself couldn't fit Heart, like standing up so he had to then sit down the drums would because it's a three-piece deconstructed drum kit all three of us had to semi face each other to kind of fit in and share drums which we normally wouldn't do and then the horns would then just cram the front of the stage so with the vocalist in the middle and that was pretty tough um but i would say that's probably the smallest stage that we've been on that i can think of yeah yeah that's a that's a small venue too oh yeah like yeah. once you guys squeezed in there like you would have nearly filled out the whole room oh yeah yeah that's right yeah like i said like that i mean that was one of the first shows i think that was the first show we did and and um yeah after that we was like we're not doing that again like in the sense of the space you know what i mean you need you need space to, to put on the show and so that, that's also a tricky thing with the band too is that wherever you're looking for venues and want to book you actually got to take a look at the stage and be like you know most of the time you know a band that might still play on a big stage can kind of deal with a, a slightly smaller stage but we actually like physically if you want to put on the show you need quite lots a large space yeah 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 and uh like <clears throat> that sounds like a like what well, uh, you know a little bit of a like hot potato horror story but have you got a like a moment as the band like that is just the funniest story you know that you guys are an experience you've had together? Oh geez, I mean we had a lot of interesting experiences together. Um, oh geez, I've got to try and really think about this. I mean there was this one time I, I mean I don't know how how crazy it was, but uh, we had this this show in Bahrain, so in the Middle East um and we were going over there initially the idea is just to do some roaming shows so not on stage per se but like you know roaming around on the on Wait, these hang on where, where were you playing uh in Bahrain so it's kind of like near um Dubai Abu Dhabi oh wow like okay. an island an island just off the coast of Saudi Arabia yeah Saudi Arabia. yeah so we got in so we were flying out there and a lot of the guys in the group had actually never um been to a non-western country before yeah and um so this was a great experience because you know to be able to then go over there and kind of just like you know perform music for um for people that just didn't also just didn't speak that much english it was also a really great um experience for them but they were kind of a little bit nervous because they're just like this is a very different experience for them we get in we get to the airport the land the, the plane lands and we get off and we have this amazing man who was dressed in traditional wear like you know, got the headdress on and the, the long white traditional wear. Large man, deep voice. His name was Abbas. Yeah. And he was like, okay, you all here? Come with me. Come with me. He's just, just you know, <laughs> ushering us through the airport. Your hot potato band comes through. Come with me. Come with me. Take, and he's like, where's your passports? I take all your passports. And he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, take it, take that. You know, getting us through all the immigration takes us up to like the border force people and he's chummy with the border force and the border force guy lets us through and, and all the bits and pieces and all the, all the guys in the group are just like kind of semi nervous. Cause like, we just gave all our passports to someone we don't know. <laughs> Firstly, <laughs> <laughs> 
if we're in a, in a foreign country, we don't really, you know, none of us spoke Arabic. Uh, <laughs> so here we are just like trusting this man who's, who's taking us through the airport and, you know, we kind of make our way through. But uh, I just remember the border force person who was kind of like sus at first, like, you know, who are all these people coming in with all these instruments, like visa situation, what's going on, you know, but this guy, this big man, a bus was just letting us through, getting us, you know, through and just talking all nice with the, uh, with the border force guy. And we get through um and um we ended up then heading off to get ready for the first show which was going to be in the center of town it was kind of like this really big square um where everyone would gather and, and we'd just put on this street show and i remember playing and just thinking like oh this is so weird because it's really hard to kind of get across western songs to to um uh yeah to, to people in the middle east where they're not listening to a lot of this music but we'd find ways to do that and then all of a sudden here we are we're dancing on the street we're having a good time and we and we didn't really quite know how best to approach people but all of a sudden the guy that uh led us through the border force comes out and he's dancing you know and we're all dancing with him i was just thinking this one moment like how and i think all the guys at this point really enjoyed this moment because they realized this is a really it's an incredible place it's a it's a um uh they they realized how surreal the moment was that you know here we were afraid of going through like border forces and going through you know you know when you go through an airport it is a little bit tough yeah. going through all those bits and pieces but here's this guy that's just led us through into the country and now he wants to come party with us out on the street do you know what i mean so that that's just a memory that i just kind of can remember right now but there's there's so many things that happen and i just you know it's too much to remember. <laughs> wow, man, that that's that's yeah. a great story, man. And you really did paint the paint the picture well there when you were telling the story. You can almost imagine it. Um, yes. Yeah, you're a good storyteller too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, you could almost well the way you were explaining it, you could almost picture what the you know what the what a, the scenery a little bit. But um, oh, jeez. How like how did you even get book book yourself over there? Like what? <laughs> How, how did yeah. that happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, that one, I think, was something they'd wanted us over there for like, they'd called every year for three years and it wasn't until the third year that we could actually make it happen. But um, uh, they'd someone had seen us here in Australia back when we were doing street shows and they were just, they were just, yeah, they just, I guess they wanted us to do it over there um, for a festival that was like, it was an international music festival. So they're like, oh, let's bring these guys out to, to do it so but yeah we never really had the chance to kind of do it over the first two years and the third year came around and we we're like yeah let's just give it a go if it, if it makes sense let's give it a go so nice and like where else have you guys been overseas um new zealand was uh so we uh new zealand's kind of like where we toured a lot of our original music yeah. um and you know in the in the format that you probably are seeing in a lot of those videos where it's all on stage and everything Bahrain was where it was just mainly the the street shows um and we also did a, a bunch of street shows in Hawaii as well nice man wow I didn't realize how much you guys had you know done a bit of traveling and stuff with the band yeah yeah I mean obviously it's it's a it's a it's uh, with me personally, like I, you know, I, I try to make sure that wherever we go, it makes the most sense. You know, I'm, I'm not really about sending 10 people overseas. If, if there's not like, you know, it's very easy to lose a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't want people getting stuck if that makes sense. So, you know, when it comes to doing that, you know, we're not, we're not rushing to, to go overseas, but we do try to make the, the, um, we, we do try to go overseas when it makes sense. Um, you know, if, yeah if it ever does make sense so and for us that that first step especially with the original music taking that to new zealand was a was a um first big step for for the group yeah. um because we know we know the street show works we could go anywhere and do the street show but the challenge of getting your original music out to other countries is 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 a, is a thing um so and because we're doing it all in-house um even all the marketing all the promo all the you know everything that goes along with it um it was important that we just sort of be as conservative as possible and just do it right rather than we just we just we don't risk it too much yeah yeah, yeah. wow man. and um like you are you guys like signed to any labels like is there anybody taking any pressure off of you or you're just you're just all over it yeah yeah no we're not signed to anything totally independent wow wow 
I, I I'm I'm really impressed by that, man. Like you've you've you, you're definitely like all over it. That's a that's that's really amazing. Like, are you are you proud like that the band has like come that like where you know you're at this position now and you've been all independent the whole way? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really proud of everyone in the group, uh, especially because it's it isn't a it isn't an easy thing, but um, uh, to do, especially in the first couple of years, like with any group you've got those growing pains and and uh so um, i'm proud of everyone that that put in the time and energy and i think we're all very committed to to making a lot of things happen which makes you feel a little bit more invested in doing things if that makes sense you know so we follow through with ideas it's not really i, th- I think and a lot of people have asked me this and especially people that are running bands is like how do you keep the band together it's just like follow if you have an idea follow through with it if you let the idea slip people kind of start to feel like it never really like what's the point if nothing's going to kind of come of it, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So stick with the ideas that you have, even if it, you know, have some small ideas, have some grand ideas, but as long as you've got ideas, even if they're small, little steps forward kind of help keep the momentum going. Um, so yeah, it's, and it's, if people want to kind of feel involved and the other thing too, is just the band. It was really important um, that all the band members are feel like they they have ownership of the band. You know, it's not one person saying you're doing this, you're doing that. Like you do what I say. It's not that. It's very much like it's semi run on a democracy, which, you know, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure, you know, it's not an easy thing to do with a band, yeah. but like to a degree, it's a democracy. Like I, I generally have a final say on things like based mm-hmm. on what I, cause I spend a lot of time on things, but I don't make a say until I've kind of heard what everybody thinks about something. And that's important. Allow everybody to kind of the, the time to think and, talk about what they feel about a situation and um yeah it makes everyone feel very much a part of it and invested yeah yeah i think you i i i there's there's a big part of me man what what that's hoping that um you know when other bands and stuff watching this on the channel uh, i've got a little notepad next to them and, and they're taking the notes a little bit and just studying because i think you know, like if you study music and stuff like that, you and uh, and you go to you know, TAFE uni, whatever, and they tell you about you know doing music independently. I think you guys are a good case study of of how you can actually do that because I, um, you know, a lot a lot of time you think people are independent or stuff, and you find out that they they you've got this label or you know doing this or got yeah. a management or somebody kind of pulling this a couple of the strings behind them. But this is fascinating. I'm I'm, I'm honestly just my jaws on the floor a little bit. Oh, thanks. Yeah, and look, you know, it still surprises me to this day because you know, like I said we started off with a gig that we thought this was going to be the only gig and we're not doing any more after this, but it just kept going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And um, like, what's where, where are you headed? You know, like we talked about where you've been and where you've mm-hmm. come from now, where, where, where are you going, man? Like how far, you know, what's, what are your, what are your plans other than yeah. you know, doing the little tour, like your, you know, your tour around Australia and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what what else is installed yeah i mean i mean before covid hit we had a plan to um to be in europe that year um and a couple of festivals lined up and all the bits and pieces so our our plan back then was to be like great well let's just let's just see if we can do a little run in europe and just give it a go um but uh, obviously covid came through so um yeah i mean our plan is to like obviously we'll get back there it's not the biggest um our important where we're kind of placing priority has kind of changed a little bit because over COVID we diversified a lot. So like I said before, with the workshops, um, one of our guys was actually a full-time music teacher and, and left his job as a full-time music teacher to just take on putting together a workshop program, an education program. And what that did was it, it funneled a lot of our energy where we would normally put into performing, rehearsing, writing music. We go, great, let's just put together this program. And it means we can actually now take that everywhere. So if we do go and do a weekend in you know, Southeast Brisbane, for example, we can spend a week prior or afterwards going around to different schools during the day. And to a degree, you now have this like uh, full-time job for the whole week yeah. where it only requires an hour per workshop or an hour and a half each workshop, right? So it's not a whole day, but it's it's enough that you can go in, inspire kids. Um, kids then also really, you know, 
yeah, have a lot of questions and want to come to shows. And then, you know, you, you, you then start to build this relationship with a lot of schools and a lot of people in the community. And that was really important too, is that, you know, when you go in, sometimes you kind of just like, you're at the show, you leave. So we really got involved in, in the workshops. Um, and we built, we've built a whole web store for all of our sheet music. So people actually, we get a lot of, you know, sales from around the world of people that want to actually play our music because it's all available now. Yeah. So we, that was kind of our plan is to really build, uh, I guess at least for the next year is, is continue to build all those little things we never had time to do um, prior to COVID. Yeah. You know? So there's just a lot of things and you just kind of, yeah, keep building the foundation. Yeah. Um, and then again, I guess also just getting back on the scene was the big goal for next year. Um, play as many places as possible. Um, yeah, just just show up, I guess, is the main thing. And also yeah. get back out there and let people know it's good to go. <laughs> it's good to go. Yeah. And that the school thing that you mentioned there, that, that's really interesting too. Because I remember being a kid, I didn't go grow up in Sydney. I grew up out in the out in the country. And when anyone mm-hmm. would come to the school and do one of those presentations where where they the teachers let you go out of class and sit through and you're like, yes, we don't have to do class. And but you look at anybody who's from, you know, Sydney or something like that that's come to your school, like you look. You think in your brain, because you're in a small town, these are rock stars to you guys. So like, you know, and then, then you, like, I still remember a lot of people that, you know, came to my high school and stuff like that, just because it was an event, you know, it was like someone's at a high school, you know, somebody or right. at a primary school. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's it. That's, that's what we've, we've been, we've really been enjoying that. And it's also good to know that that that's always there too, you know, like, you know, there'll be times when we get back to performing and that will be quite a busy time, but uh, especially in the downtime, we can go back in, into schools and continue to kind of do good there. Um, yeah. And, and keep forming relationships in different, different parts of Australia. Yeah, you'll have to get some stickers made, man. Like there's any time anybody <laughs> would give us stickers at a thing. It was like, the probably the best marketing for those for whoever gave us the stickers because we'd put them everywhere, anywhere that you shouldn't have put them, <laughs> they were there. Yes. <laughs> the yep. the oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Oh man, that that's awesome. I've in, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed this interview. How long have we gone for, guys? Mm, not sure. Because I know I know whenever I'm having fun 40. or it time yeah. goes really fast. Yeah, it's fast. <laughs> the 40 minute 40 minute mark. All right. Yeah, I feel like I feel like music bands sh- should give back to the community what you guys are doing as well, especially yeah. when you guys got the talent on the side. I reckon that's a really good idea. It's probably better than rugby league players that go out and talk about you know charity work. But I reckon bands should do that as well as a side as a side job. That's really yeah. interesting, man. It's the first time we've had a band that goes out to schools and the community and giving back. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's fun. Thanks so much. Yeah yeah and um you know when when are you guys will you guys put out just keep putting out singles or have you got kind of an album planned is there yeah so we at the moment we we just last month we released um a a reimagined version of one of our songs um and we're actually going to release a couple more re, re revisited songs over the next month or two um and we've actually, this, the next one we're releasing is with totally different instruments than the brass instruments. So like um, a lot of us play a lot of different instruments, including guitar, you know, bass, keys, yeah. all the bits and pieces. So we decided why not, why not revisit some of our old songs in a totally new way? Um, so we'll be doing that over the next couple of months. And then from the beginning of 2022, we've kind of half finished an album before COVID took <laughs> all the time out of the studio um and of course like as a 10 piece band you just it's illegal to even rehearse so yeah <laughs> so um yeah so uh at beginning of 22 we'll be dropping a new single with the, the full original lineup and um and an album shortly thereafter oh that's that oh that's i'm just impressed man like i'm just impressed that you've you know you've that you've got you've you know able to able to you know get an album out because i i've seen so many like other other groups out there that are just putting single after single after single and it's nice to hear that you guys are going you know for the full album which is cool oh cheers yeah look it's not it's not an easy 
not an easy process. We actually had to figure out ways to even write, like do demos, right? Because again, as a brass band, you can't like, you, you can't just sort of create everything on a, on a, you know, with, with samples and midis and all the bits and pieces to, to create it. So basically the idea was that everyone had to record remotely uh, to a guide track. Somebody puts it together and mixes it on our end and to a rough, you know, roughly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and hope that the demo kind of works. And that was the only way we could really rehearse and understand whether or not this song is working as a brass band, do you know? Because again, we like to push the boundaries. We're not, we're not, we're not playing it safe. We're playing songs that are like, generally a brass band wouldn't play this style of music. So we have to kind of listen to it and understand whether or not it works. So putting, putting it through and everyone recording the parts and then listening and then taking notes, re-recording it. Yeah. All right. I think this sounds like it could be good, you know? Yeah. You know, we, we did a lot of demos that are kind of similar to that. And, um, and then we, now we just, yeah, actually this, this week coming will be the first time we actually get to play the demos as a band together <laughs> or the, the ideas before they nice. go into the studio so nice and quick question will you guys ever put out the demos like on you know after you put out the album and stuff you know have you ever thought about putting out the demos because i'm like a sucker for that stuff you know like oh, yeah. i'm all into like anthologies of people and their demos and stuff because it just allows you to be inside you you know the 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 person's head for a second and see kind of how they've done this to that and you can sign to see the process a little bit but have, have you guys yeah. ever thought about doing that yeah i mean we haven't uh to be honest um i think the the gang are, uh at the moment i think that it might happen eventually yeah but uh, i know that a lot of the gang just like to make sure things are they don't like to release things until they know it's like yeah what what they like you know what i mean uh but having said that we do have a lot of demos lying around and, and I agree with you. I, I do like listening to demos and understanding how does a bit, you know, how did the song go from this to this, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's nice to hear also, we don't have a producer or anything like that. So all, all of it's done in house, but you know, when you are listening to other songs, I like sometimes to hear like, how did the band come together and put the song together? And then what happened when it went through production? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What changed? Yeah. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear how you did uh, It's Your Own Body. Like, I want to hear the the demo version of that because there's one oh, part yeah. of that song which which there's this weird part between, like, the verse and the chorus where you've got this, like, gradual kind of, um, I don't know, building of, like, what would you, what, what, what do you call it, man? Like, it's like this building of tension that you've kind of created on the horns and then it drops into the yeah. chorus. And I, I, I just wondered how you, how you guys got, how that happened or who's the genius behind that little yeah yeah well let me uh, i'll give you a little backstory here because okay so um max who is our trombone player he's the one that uh came to us with the original idea of the song yep. um he um would he the, the first time that he brought it to us was uh after he also does a little bit of um i should i gotta try to remember this, a little bit he does a bit of microbiology essentially uh, so he goes out into the field every now and again as well. And uh, so he'll just whistle while he's driving out in the field out, you know, out west um, near Dubbo and, and out towards Broken Hill and things like that. So he, he's just whistling and having a good time and he'll whistle ideas. And so the, the initial idea of It's Your Own Body came from just a whistle idea that he had. And then he took it home and he has a little looping station. So he just created this little loop using his trombone. Uh, and then he just sort of charted the idea and then brought it in i've got all these as recordings as well so it's, a, yeah. it's it would be fascinating to put it all together and you know timeline out timeline it uh but i remember he brought it in as a chart and we kind of played through it it didn't originally have that little pre-chorus section that i think you're talking about yeah 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 um yeah it was kind of it kind of uh was, yeah it was a little bit different but yeah i, I think over time it sort of evolved with workshopping with the band. We also really like those, we call them like the horn swells. Yeah. So that's what that, that tension is a little bit. You're kind of getting that, the, the swell of the horns. Um, and, and you'll hear that in a, in a lot of our tunes at some point. Um, and so that's, that's one thing that's probably a unique feature to Hot Pots uh, is that, yeah, that kind of tension. And then I guess the release at the, at the, um, course yeah. i'd never yeah. heard that before like and and i i think that was the i i kept playing it over and was just like how did they do that what what is yeah. this you know like because i i just thought that is so clever you know this yeah. is it, it, <laughs> <It's>, I think, <laughs> yeah yeah 
Yeah, it, it, it's honestly, it's it's a uh, it's also just it's a test a testament to the um the arrangements as well. Like you know, like the, the guys that uh, that are doing a lot of the horn arranging, like they sit there and they're like, what are the right notes to build the you know the chords behind everything you know it, it, that song particularly took a long time because what we wanted to do is um a lot of our original music on the street we we had this you know the, the kind of street vibe um and we as we went into writing music we kind of moved away from the street sound and then we for this song in particular we wanted to bring it back so you yeah. hear a little bit more of that like new orleans street beat behind the song um, and, but we also wanted to keep that pop element a little bit in there, so you can you understand like the structure of the song is still a little bit pop, and and the and the, even the melody to a degree has a little bit of that those pop elements. Um, but and then obviously the raucous, uh, raw kind of ending with with all the instruments all over the place, right? So yeah, it was a bit of a mishmash, and it was and it was something that we we worked hard on trying to like not overdo, but also not be too. Um, yeah, too conservative. It was, it was a tricky. It was a tricky one to kind of balance, you know. But yeah, I'm glad you like it though. That's that's amazing. You, you, well, you got it right because like every person I've played that song to, whether they were in my, you know, in my car and or you know, just in you know, in vicinity of wherever I was playing your music, would suddenly start to to bop or groove, and they're like, who who who? What what track? What song is this? You know, and they would ask me about it, and it, it's happened every time, you know, <laughs> and even like even that like first like 15 seconds of your of your song is like perfect for like stories and stuff like that for instagram it's just like you've you're you're in you've you've got people's attention it's just got i don't know it's got something i, I don't know how to explain it, it. I don't, yeah it. yeah that's all right yeah thanks thanks so much yeah it's just got something that gets 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 you grooving and gets you know gets people's attention yeah yeah oh thank you so much that's awesome no worries, man. Like I felt like, you know, for, for my little radio, when I was obsessed with the, you know, this track for like a month and a little, probably, probably more than a month, to be honest, I, uh, I, I used it a couple of times on, on like the, on I say an Instagram story, just that thing. And um, yeah. And uh, you, you, all of a sudden more people were opening my, my story. I don't know if you find, try to figure it out, what, what it was or what I was using or. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. so there you go people check out the hot potato band and uh you know it's your own body oh, cheers thanks so much no worries i think this is probably oh one other thing i just want to ask too touching yeah. on studio how did you guys is who's got the home studio or do you guys go and record somewhere else uh yeah i mean over the years we usually go to a studio to record um we've done it a lot of different ways in the past um in the first recording we ever did which was this is how it should be. That was done in the hallway of the old, um, the old Rec Studios, uh, in the in the, uh, in the city. I don't know what it was before that, so forgive me for that. But um, uh, but the after that we then we work now a lot really closely with a, a guy called um, a Fan over at Parliament Studios, um, and we and he's just in the Leichhardt area. And we, we just, we gel really well with Dan there. And he, he, he's very, you know, working with a 10 piece band, you have to be patient, but you also have to be, you know, like just open and, and happy to kind of workshop things. And he's, he's just amazing to work with. So um, yeah, we, we do all our recordings there, but all our demos, um, but yeah, we do have some home studios, but we now have our own rehearsal studio in the Botany area that we all meet up at and, and do most of the stuff in. Cool. Just for demos and things. Yeah, yeah, very nice, man. I, I, you know, this has been probably, you know, one of those interviews that's been great and also like super insightful. And and uh, honestly, I this is the one interview that I I think I've come out of just being like, you know, fuck, you guys are amazing. I can't believe that this is, you know, just a brilliant story. What do you think, Paul? I think yeah, I, I agree. Story. There's a lot of heart and soul well, in this in this band. A lot of yeah. giving and there's, there's no there's a lot of giving and caring as well i've just been That's sitting good. back and listening to you man you you know how you've got a really good um like conversation um pattern and everything so it's, it's good to listen to you mate it was really good oh thanks so much yeah no it was, it's it's awesome to chat yeah thanks so much and it's it great 
it's it's, a, it's it's nice to actually talk about things especially now that COVID's done you know the, it's yeah. getting me all excited for the year to come <laughs> yeah for sure i'm looking forward yeah. to just watching and continue following your journey man because i you know i it's only it's only going to go up from here for you guys and uh, i just want to see how far you guys can take the hot potato van oh cheers thanks looking good it's gonna be fun hopefully <laughs> yeah and i'm just looking forward to hearing more music man i just you know yeah it's 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 all good stuff and i'm you know i'm i hope you i hope you put out a few more tracks that have that you know have them have the magic of it's your own body where it's just kind of got that you know that party thing to it yeah oh, don't worry there's more that's on the way Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks, man.